Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Grow Your Path to Wellness. In case you missed it, like usual, our recap for last week, we welcomed back to Lisa Schaefer, and we covered almost like all things about our root chakra, and you know, we touched on how trauma impacts the chakra. Um, she gave some really good tips on how to unblock that as well. So if you missed that, make sure you go back, tune back in. And then this week is episode number three already of our Man Down Men's Mental Health series. So that means we're welcoming back Tommy. And then with him, he is bringing um, a close friend, Jason Bass. So welcome to you both. Thanks for having us, ladies. I am enjoyed to be here. <laughs> Jason, welcome. Um, Jason actually reached out to us after seeing a couple episodes being posted and asked to join us. So Jason, can you give us a introduction? Who are you? Where do you come from? What's your background? What do you do now? And and why did you want to come talk about this topic? Um, thanks for having me. My name is Jason. I'm 35 years old. Uh, I run my own business, AJ Home Upgrades, a remodeling company. Um, yeah, when I had saw that Tommy was doing this, I really wanted to get into it because for a very long time in my life, I ignored my mental health. Uh, I've stayed pretty physically fit. Um, I have maintained a decent financial fitness, but I really um, hid a lot from my own mental health issues and mostly because to acknowledge them was to show some kind of weakness and just the way that society portrayed that. And after owning that and taking part of that in life and how much better my life has been, I really wanted to be a part of making that awareness for other men that this is something that not only is it okay to have and is it okay to deal with, but it's a, it's a must to um, take on. And it's, uh, it's more of a sign of weakness to not acknowledge it. And to not take care of it than it is to hide from it and allow society to um, put that stigma down on you and hold you down with that. So, Amen. <laughs> I'm over here like, preach. <laughs> yeah, it's been, uh, it's interesting, right? You know, I was, I was listening to, um, as I do when I drive, uh, some random TED Talk podcast. And we're talking about, um, it was the, and I'm sorry, I'm butchering this a little bit. I, I should have been more prepared, but I'm, I'm in a bit of a slump myself currently. Uh, the the guy who plays Raphael, Raphael on uh, Jane the Virgin. Amanda, you're aware of who he is, yeah? You were a fan of the yeah, show? Yeah, yeah. So he was talking about how, um, you know, kind of, you have to tear down the stigma of, of, of men's mental health and, um he brought up this one thing that really like it resonated. It was just a, it was a small, stupid comment, but it, it, it made so much sense. We live in constant conflict and, may, and and I don't think this is limited to men by any means. Right. But then I started when I heard that for some reason, it like it triggered something. I'm like, I am in conflict all the time, like all the time. I'm just fighting everything and nothing at all. I can, it's, it's always, I'm always curious. Like, I can't fathom what somebody, how somebody views me. Like I have no idea how somebody outside of me looks. No, no idea, or how they look at me when I'm walking around doing my job, doing whatever. How the people that are that work that work under me, how my peers, how you know my friends, my family. Inside, it's like a fucking barrage all the time. That that word like just surfaced like the way I don't know if it's the way he said it or just having heard it for that time. Conflict sucks. Like that inner conflict is so hard, man. And it's uh, you know, dealing with all the stigmas that that come around it. Like, of course, we're you know, men are gonna do the man thing, and we're not gonna say anything when I do all this. But man, like, can we talk? Can we talk about that? Can can you ladies are in this profession? Like, Jason, you know, talk about where you're at. Like, when you hear, when you hear that 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 you are in constant conflict inside of yourself. Like, what does that what does that mean? What does that mean? for ladies who are in this profession and, and talk about this. Jason, what does that mean for you personally? Because I know it, like, it spun me right the fuck up. Like, I'm like, man, and I don't even know what to do with it. Don't even know how to address it. I'm just <laughs> in it, you know? Um, well, for me, um, I have had the benefit of therapy for the last year and a half. And that is actually something that was explained to me 
in generally the same amount of terms. And for me, what that was is, so for growing up, um, I, I had a very traumatic uh, childhood growing up. Um, my mom was uh, in and out of sobriety with drugs and alcohol. My father has been in prison my entire life. And my stepdad suffered from a very um, thyroid imba- uh, thyroid gland imbalance, which t- t- caused him to be very uh, angry and lash out a lot. Um, so among all kinds of other things that went on. So from growing up, you know, and all this stuff that happened in my house, I was always told what happens here stays here. We don't talk about it anywhere else. So this has been ingrained in me for since I was at the age of nine or 10 that you don't talk about things you don't address them you don't anything so starting at about I would say the age of 13 up until this point I am straight A student uh honor roll merit roll all that stuff um I play chess I am uh you know into robotics and all these things um I'm in math club debate club and it took one time for one person to make fun of me. And, I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I'll never forget it because I, I, I quit playing baseball for because I wanted to do, uh, dang it, what do you call it, the, the math, the academic decathlon. So I didn't want to play baseball because I wanted to do this. And I got made fun of. And I didn't like it. And to try to go home and talk about it, nobody wanted to talk about it because my stepfather was like, you know, in agreement. I needed to be have straight A's, but I also needed to play sports. So in order to appease other people, I started playing sports because that's what boys and men were supposed to do. And from that moment on, it created a giant conflict in my life because at that point, it, it, that was the first step in appeasing other people in my life than myself and it became the easier thing to do because i'm struggling with this inner conflict so why now bring in a outer conflict into my life and that just led to a very long life of trying to make other people happy and in 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 trying to make other people happy because if i'm going to try to make tommy happy but it doesn't make amanda happy I'm going to try to make Amanda happy as well, but now it doesn't make, so I be, I started a vicious cycle of making everybody else in the world happy to eliminate the outer conflicts in my life, which only then created a greater inner conflict. Mm -hmm. And that is something it, when that was explained to me, um, in my therapy, that was something that really changed my entire life. Um, because it, it became this, you know, what is the wor- lesser, what, what was the worst evils here t- to have somebody that I don't even may not know, or I don't, I may honestly not hold their opinion in high regards to try to appease that or to, or, or to try to heal what's going on inside. Um, and it's still, even then after it ta- I, that was explained to me very early on in my therapy. Um, I suffer from alcoholism as well. So, um, I've gone back and forth in bouts of sobriety. Um, I'm now sober like a year and a half now, almost yeah, about a year and a half. Um, so there's been a lot of things in my life where, you know, even being sober, I mean, just got, you know, the reason why I started drinking again is because I was, a, I got tired of other people asking me why I wasn't drinking, you know, and it was, became easier for me to just drink and try to control it. Um, but in the meantime, I created another inner conflict of, was this really what I was doing? Was this best for me? Was it actually making me happy? Which then led to me abusing the alcohol, getting another DUI and going back to prison. Um, so the inner conflicts in our lives, if we do not address these, if we do not do something to try to maintain a balance, because you, you'll never find complete, I don't think we ever find complete inner peace, but a balance of maintaining the stress and the good, the, the good stress and the bad stress, because there is good stress in our lives. There's things that push us to be better. But maintaining that balance and making sure that we are taking that pause to resolve that conflict in us has been the biggest change in my life, which has allowed me to start a business, to handle all that stress. If it, 
if somebody came to you and told you that, hey, this guy, um, he's got mental health problems and he's an alcoholic, <laughs> and he's gonna come run a business and he's gonna come in your home and fix your home, you you would think that they you you would not want to hire that person. And 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 the person I was two years ago, I would walk into your home and you'd be able to see that right away. You would see the chaos that I would have portrayed because my inner conflict had grown so much that the chaos was on now on the surface. Mm -hmm. So for Tommy, when you're like, what are all these other people seeing for me? It got to a point where it was so bad that it was recognizable immediately. Like there's something not right with this person. Um, so, I mean, that's in a nutshell to wrap that up. Like it, it did that. It, that is where it's, if you do not begin to try to handle that inner conflict before you resolve anything else in your life. It, it's like trying to do step D before you did step A. Um, and, and that's where that resonates with me. And that's that's the biggest thing that I've learned in all of this, that, yeah, there's a lot of things I want to take care of in my life. And there's a lot of things I want to address. There's amends I need to make. There are people that I need to tell that, you know, you've hurt me for a long time that I've held in for a long time. But the very first thing, step A, is trying to bring some kind of balance to that conflict that goes, that inner conflict, that inner, that, that, that inner storm that's there, that you got to heal that first and take care of that before you can take care of anything else. Do you mind me asking you, Jason, like at what, you said you've been in therapy for about like a year and a half. Yeah. So like, like growing up and things and that internal battle, did you start to notice warning signs for yourself or were other people, I heard you say like other people were noticing things about you. Were you noticing those at the time as well? Or was that what brought it into your own consciousness, your own awareness? Obviously you weren't, um, just, you weren't feeling happy and all of these things, but as far as connecting that with like, holy cow, I really need to make some kind of change for me to heal that. Um, so I don't mind you, you can ask me any questions about anything you want. Cause it's, I have no problem answering any of anything. Um, I first really noticed that there was something not healthy or right with me when I was about the age of, I would say 15. And I was so angry all the time. And there was no, no matter what I did, um, to try to stop that anger. It wasn't like a, even an outward anger. So it wasn't like I would lash out at people or anything like that at that age. It was just just feeling so red and so hot all the time. Um, and once again, try to bring those things up. And I was told to push it down. Like, anger's fine. Go punch a pillow. Um, and that probably, and that helps um, those things that people... Um, teach us or tell us to punch the pillows, to go down in the basement and scream real loud. Those are really good diffusers for what I like to call um, reactive anger. So if my wife does something that makes me mad, I can walk away and scream and yell for a second and get rid of that and then come back. But those things do not work when you have the level of an imbalance that creates a mental, you know, creates mental health issues. Um, so yeah, about the age of 15, like I said, I just, I always just felt, and that's the best way to explain it. I just felt red all the time. Like I, I, I wasn't snapping at people. I wasn't whatever. It was just so hot and angry and, and um, just constantly frustrated with mostly myself and not even and not knowing why, which then created more and more of this vicious cycle of just feeling like that. And it wasn't until I was 22 years old-ish and had my third DUI where I really started to equate that there was a problem. Like, this is not normal. I'm not just a hot-blooded male, you know, former Marine, a lot of testosterone. Like, there's something really wrong um, with it. And while I wanted... At that point, I really, that began my journey of the struggle of trying to get healthy and better um, and trying to find a way to do that 
without somebody putting me down or being aware of my issue because a lot of times I didn't want obviously I didn't want people to know I had a problem. My biggest problem in life is wanting to feel normal. Um that that um media style of just normal fitting in i don't want people i didn't i didn't want to be extraordinary because that meant i'd be different too like i just don't want i didn't want people to look at me i didn't want you to know me i didn't want you to do anything with me i wanted to do what i wanted to do and just fit in and blend in because then i don't have that mean to me that meant i didn't have an issue if i could blend in with the rest of the world and nobody noticed me for anything good or bad that meant i must not have issues and that probably meant that you didn't, you could stay away from conflict. Like if, if nobody sees me or I'm not seen, I'm not, there's no conflict to be resolved and I can breathe a little bit. Correct. Definitely. So I hope that answered your question. No, absolutely. Thank you. Because okay. everybody, it man, like we, and Amanda and I, we both talk about how do these things start to manifest internally and how can we start to actually because we have to label it right and it's like and sometimes especially if we we can't expect ourselves to make changes or you know to actually even know if anything's wrong until we can tell like this is manifesting i can give it a label and separate it from me my um my feedback is that uh, as soon as you were talking about your, you know, you're like, I think, I don't know if it's like mathletes or whatever it was, your passion. Um, I do in my work with people uh, in trauma healing, I do a little lot of inner child work. Um, and so I just, as you were talking, I was like, that was the moment where little Jason got shoved away for the first time and his passions and his exciting desires and his imagination and creativity was told that doesn't matter. You need to just buff up and this is what men do. And so little, that little Jason just got shoved away, you know, and that, and that was your true passion. So then when you describe feeling red all the time, I'm like, of course, of course you feel red all the time because you feel so invalidated and you're just stuck and you can't live your true self. Yeah. And, and really the most unfortunate part about all that, and the one thing I try to, I, I talk a lot about this whenever I, I, I might see some stuff on Facebook or with some of the kids when I was doing um, the youth football and coaching stuff, is the most important thing is that to try to find a way to not wait so long when you start when we start to feel this way and it's why I get so, I get so angry. So, um, when I see, you know, like you'll see now, like for instance, Kevin love, um, I know it was a big thing a couple years ago when he came out and talked about his mental health issues and everyone applauded him for that. And it was like, Oh great. He spoke out about it. But then what happened after we never, we didn't hear anything about it. We've never heard a, a word about it again because it still is, a thing where people it's almost to be ex more accepted to be some kind of deviant um, human being than to be somebody seen with any kind of mental health instability and it and obviously I didn't know that when I was a kid other than that I was just trying to told not to talk about it but it just it just it drives me crazy just that that we as a society it is you will get applauded and you will get a pat on the back but then you're still pushed to the side and it's your problem go deal with it because I swear I I feel and I and, and I don't mean to take it this way there I was when I was in prison they have like focus groups trying to help people with pedophilia problems and they will make sure that these people are trying to get um rehabilitated and then there's you know a class a week for some kind of mental health stuff that gets rescheduled every week or like out here you know it is so hard sometimes to try to i'm fortunate enough to have a really good health insurance plan that actually offers me free therapy 
but for people to try to get this help and everything, and it's just so, it becomes so hard. Like my aunt is having a struggle getting uh, therapy for my nephew, you know, because she, the hoops and everything that people have to jump through um, to get this. And I, most of this stuff, these issues that are caused be by not treating this are worse than some issues that you would, that arise from not getting health treatments because the long-term damages of this are exponential. Luckily, I am, I consider myself one of the lucky people because while I went down a very dark path for a very long time, leading all the way up to thoughts of not wanting to live, I don't call it suicide because I would have never um, like wanted to end my life, but just to not exist, just to just be nothing and to not have anything or to nothing. So to get all the way to that point and, but still be able to come back from, I mean, how many people out there are, were somebody that could have, you know, led cancer research or been some kind of anything to make any change in the world that were pushed down and pushed away because they did not receive this help, this treatment, and this because as a society, the stigma is pushed down that you shouldn't talk about this. You you deal with this quietly. Oh, you see a therapist? Don't tell people that. You you get a smirk, you get a laugh. And while it may have may, may have gotten better in the last couple of years, it's still nowhere where it needs to be. Yeah, that's you know, I'm sitting here listening to you, Jason, and I'm and I'm I'm thinking of this stupid uh like this stupid analogy. It's like where you know, we're these wanderers, right? And we're, we're walking through this place, we're walking through this world, and we see this bright, shining city, right? This really, really beautiful city off in the distance. And lights are, lights are glowing, sounds like everybody's happy, you know, people are having fun, it just feels good. And you're walking towards it, and it's feeling better, feeling better. When you get to it, these giant walls are surrounding the city, these giant friggin' walls, right? And we're in a place where those walls are, are so unbelievably high, so unbelievably impossible to overcome or get through. There's no gates. There's no doors letting you in. You have to figure out how to climb those damn walls. And we're standing down trying to just, we're throwing pebbles at the wall, you know, but we are, we are trying to get in. We're not stopping, you know, we're, we're trying to get in, but it's just, it, it feels overwhelmingly impossible. Some days that wall, for me anyway, some days that wall feels a little bit shorter. And it seems like I might just get there if I climb hard enough. Other times it feels insurmountable, like it's just not not reachable. And, um, you know, it's funny because you talked about the, the cycle that we go in as people. It's, it's interesting. I'm, I'm thinking about that here, and it's interesting because... We go through that with ourselves, but you also, if you, if you step, if you try to look at it and maybe I'm way off here, society is in the same cycle. So it's almost like we have to kill the stigma and society needs to adjust and not look at it as a stigma, but we have to do it on an individual basis. So society can as a whole, it's, it's wild, it's wildly complex, right? Like, it, it, this isn't and it can't just be a hot topic right and that's what i that's what worries me you know and, and the thing like you mentioned with the kevin love thing that was super cool super awesome and it was like it was almost validating like yeah we struggle but in the grand scheme like in the, you know in the public eye like in that big scale where you know so many people are talking about it looking at it etc a, a big portion felt validated so it was good progress but at the same time it was kind of used as a is a flashy topic, right? Something that was was fun to talk about. Now let's move aside. Just like you had mentioned, like it's 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 good, right? We have to keep throwing these stones. Like it's great. Like uh, when we talk to people that watch these podcasts, it's super validating. It really is. I want people to feel better, right? But at the same time, I don't want to be a flashy topic. I don't want I don't want this to be a flashy topic in any way because it's it sucks, you know. I you know I actually I got pushed back by something really stupid. And I talked to Amanda about this. It really messed me up, really bothered me. It was some stupid comments on one of the videos that one of the podcasts that we did that I seen on, on her TikTok. And I'm like, really? Like, but what it was, it was like a trigger. It was a trigger to that shit that I hear all the time. Like, shut up, go to work, put your boots on, don't talk about how you're feeling, deal with it, blah, 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 blah. Like, you know, fuck you, man. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like, fuck that idea. Like, that's that ain't real. That's that's perpetuating that cycle. And it's it's no wonder. And it's just, 
you know, it's wild. You know, the thing, and this is something that I would love to figure out how to do. I would, I dream of figuring out how to do. How do we make it safe? Because it's still not safe. I mean, I don't know. I don't know about everyone else. I can't speak for everyone else, but I don't feel safe. I don't, I don't feel safe even doing this. This takes a toll on me. This beats, I get, I log off of these conversations and I need to go sit in a coffin. That's why I feel like I'm like unleashed, you know, and it's, it's not bad. It's not that I, I want to do this. This is healing and it's helpful. And I want to be one of the people <laughs> on the front line trying to help create safety and acknowledgement and understand that this, this is there. But time and time again, man, we hear the same things and it's not at all something to belittle in any way. So please don't take it that way when I say this, Jason. But time and time again, we, you know, we're going to hear men constantly when the question's asked in a place that we can actually speak. We're going to hear a lot of the same things. We're going to hear that those those key things that are that are causing this resistance to healing for men is we don't feel safe. We don't feel validated. We need to make sure everybody else is happy. We need to take care of everyone else. We 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 can't say how we feel or somebody's going to hold us back. Or our life's going to be held back. Our opportunities, our dreams, you know. We're just dudes. We're just guys, you know. We're, you know, we're special because we are alive and on this planet. And we're special in all of our unique ways. But when you when you wrap in the big picture from two million light years away, we're, we're just dudes, you know. And there's very few that actually get through and pursue their dreams and, and make it there. Like, how do we create that safe place? That's if, if if I can do anything in my life, I'm going to find a way to do that, even if it's just for 5, 10, 15, any, anybody. And it's not because I want recognition for it. It's just because I don't want people to suffer like I am every every damn day. Like, I don't want them to feel this way. I don't want people to be in conflict. Like, reach the beautiful you. Become what you can. You know? It's like, fuck, Jay. Now all I can think of, because I played football with you for so long, all I can think of is what what you would do in a decathlon in a math in a mathematics decathlon like that, you know, and now I, all I want to do is play chess with you. Cause I didn't even know, man. <laughs> I had no idea. I'm like, yeah. yes, let's go. Like, I, I don't know anyone who plays chess. I'm dying. Let's play some chess, man. Man. I'll tell you, I teach my son right now. And, um, it's, it, it's, uh, it's funny because my son is very, um, He's very, you know, into robot, like robots, and he wants to do coding. And I te- and I'm trying to teach him to play chess, and we'll play. You know, we play a couple times a week. Um, we haven't lately. We've been a little, I've been a little busy, but we were playing like a couple times a week. And he's like, "Well, Dad, he's like, how come I never see you play chess?" And I was like, "I don't know anyone else who plays, bud. But yeah, right. you're gonna learn. You're gonna learn." Um, yeah, cause I mean, I really did. I love all that stuff. And you know, like my wife even says, "I've been, I've known my wife for." 10 years we've been married for three uh it'll be three this year but we've been together for 10 years and a couple years ago she said something she's like when did you start reading <laughs> and i was like i've always read like i love to read and i just i just didn't do it anymore i just i really didn't and i um you know some of it was because you know, I didn't have time, but a lot of it too was because it wasn't the the cool thing was the normal thing was to go out and drink and to use my free time to party and um, a lot of other things or whatever. But, you know, it, that was probably the first part of my healing it was a few years ago where I just started. I just started picking up random books and buying them. I'd be at Walmart and I'd grab a, you know, James Patterson or Tom Clancy <clears throat> or something. And I'd, you know, start to read it. And it's just things like that. Like, I, you know, just to be able to be the first step in all this and, and it's for everybody. And this is the way we make this stick is to start doing what makes you feel good as long as it's healthy for you. Mm-hmm. Um, and it doesn't matter what it is. Like, obviously I'm talking about reading and everyone be like, Oh yeah, obviously like, that's something good. But like, you know, if you like to, I don't know, you like to pick your nose and eat it, pick your nose and eat it. You know, I, it doesn't matter. You know, I, there's a lot of things out there that a lot of us don't do because we're so afraid of what somebody else might say about us or what image are we putting out there? And the thing that it, that is that it took me to learn is the worst image you could put out there is an image of not who you are. 
because eventually who you are will come out. You can bury it. You can hide it. You can whatever, but eventually it will come out. And when you've buried it and hid it for so long that people then see it, then it, then you become not, then it's, who are you? What were you? What's true and what's not? And that becomes the biggest problem. You know, just, it wasn't a big deal, but for my wife to not know for my, to, for me to be married, and been with somebody for 10 years who really didn't understand that I like to read that much just shows like how much of uh, how long I have not been myself, how I have not been to me and how I have created back to the inner conflict. So much conflict. And I, here I am doing things. Don't get me wrong. I love football. I love it. And, and, and Tommy can attest to it. My, I don't even care about anything in the game. I just like to hit people. Yeah. And you're I an love animal. It. You're an animal, you know, but that, that stays on the football field for me. That's not who I do not carry that with me. It stays there. And then when I go out, you know, I, you know, but for a long time, I carried that with me everywhere I went. I, that, that level of intensity and that level of um, controlled anger that you use to play the game at a high level then became an entire part of my life because I was able to get some kind of acknowledgement and recognition from it. So I fed off of that and carried it everywhere because I didn't get any acknowledgement or recognition for being someone who wanted to read books because I didn't know the people who wanted to like to read. I didn't get in that circles of people because somebody made fun of me once. And it, it just, it is, and it all goes back into the circle of just being buried down once appeasing everybody else continuing to bearing it and going around so the best way and a little bit to answer your question tommy like how do we make this not a hot topic is to encourage people to just be yourself mm -hmm. the more we are who we are and the more we are what makes us happy as individuals the less conflict we are going to have internally which then really will make less conflict you have externally and the entire process becomes to unravel and we can find the strings at that point and we can pull them and we can address some issues and then we're all okay. Um, but until people really want to embrace who they are and learn to be able to accept that what makes them happy is okay. As long as it's not hurting anybody else, then go do it. Like I said, pick your nose and eat it. Who cares? <laughs> um, you know, and that's just like, you know, the most like PG thing I can think of. Cause there's a lot of things out there that people hide from um, a lot of it. I, and I know a lot just going to therapy, a lot of mental health stuff comes from like repressed sexual things, you know, cause so people are so afraid to uh, acknowledge anything that they might think is abnormal when it comes to sexuality, um, whether it be, you know, you know, um, homosexual, bisexual, transgender, all those things are huge things, but little things, um, you know, even that people, you know, don't want to, they feel weird about it for whatever reason, because a stigma was put out one time or another. They don't talk about it. A lot of like the group therapy stuff I have, um, I, I just, uh, I know that those things, like, it's just, some, it's just a lot of things. Just people don't want to be who they are. They don't, they, they try to hide things. They're so worried about what somebody else is going to say and it creates the conflict. So we just, everyone just needs to start being who you want to be. Just, just do it. And it, and it's going to save you a lot of issues and you, um, anger and frustration, which then it's going to save the whole world. A lot of anger and frustrations. Yep. Yeah, my mind was authenticity. Yeah. That me, you know, and I feel like nowadays some you ask somebody to be authentic and they're kind of like to be real. And I'm like, but if that's our definition, <laughs> I feel like a lot of people in society right. are definitely, they have a distorted perception of what that means. And I had something before it leaves my place and I had to say something really quick. And you mentioned your son and the things that you're doing with your son. And then Tommy's question of how do we create a safe space? You are doing one of the biggest things that I tell anybody to do. You're fostering that in your house of that's what you're interested in. Let's do that. You know, yeah. like, I may not know anything about it, but like, tell me about it. Like, I have so many, because I see, you know, teens and it's, they come in and, and then their parents want to get upset because like, well, I asked them what they talked about. 
they said you talked about anime the whole time. And I was like, because we did. Right. I can't talk about these things anywhere else. And I can get really fired up about this and I won't do that. <laughs> That's what you're doing, Jason. And thank you for doing that with him. Do we got and we did a I'm sorry, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Go we ahead. did a whole episode recently. I don't know how many well, I say recently because time just flies, but we did a whole episode on BDSM and you know the um you know the different kinks and things that people repress because and I think it goes back to the question that Tommy asked, like, how do we feel safe? And it's like just do it. We just all have to just do it, and then it'll become the norm and the safety. Um, and then the quote that came to mind, I don't even know who says it. Is it like a Mother Teresa quote? That's like, if you want to change the world, go home and love, eat dinner with your family or something like that. Like that's where it starts. Um, and then it came, this was something else that connected for me in the beginning. Jason said, we ignore these things, but they really are the bigger things. I just did a three hour training today about how not resolving your emotions and not being able to regulate your emotions is directly linked scientifically research proven to chronic disease, chronic illness, right? So this is the work. It has to be done. Um, and I think like it has to be done on a systemic level. We need to be taught these things early on. What if every kid in kindergarten was taught how to regulate their emotions? Where would we be as a society? And then the parents also had those tools to start, you know, like you are listening to your kids and doing those special unique things. So, yeah, I think the, there's another side of a coin to that too, right? Uh, we have to take it on ourselves to kind of live, walk the walk a bit, right? Like we have to just, we have to recognize who we are. We have to, you know, just be who we are. We, you know, we got to pick our nose if we want to pick our nose. Like, and it's true. It's so, so true. But there is a flip side of that coin, right? We also, on the same fold, need to understand. You know, and we need to accept and we need to under, you know, we need to come into a world where, like Kelsey said, like, you know, I'm real, et cetera. You know, it's like, OK, being authentic is trusting that someone's authentic as well. Right. Like you, we, we, we you know, stereotypes and, um, you know, those th those biases we go into, like we that survival instinct that's just adapted into this weird freaking thing over time. But it's survival instincts like we, we go somewhere, we see a certain situation and we have a determination of what this might be before we walk through the door, before we enter the area like that's survival. Um, and we do that with people. So, you know, it's like we got to stop doing that with people like it's it's OK. It's safe. Like you're you're a person that's in in, in my yard and I'm in my yard and we're here. So that's it. There's no more barriers needed. That's it. You're here. I'm here. You're not here to harm me. I'm not here to harm you. Okay, now we should drop everything. It's, it's just not that freaking easy, right? Um, but we got to be understanding, too, because we got to, we got to, you know, people need to know that it's okay. We need to instill it in our kids. And I'm looking forward to that. You know, I, I'm like overly ambitious, like my child is going to know all these things and never suffer all the stuff that I suffer. But, you know, they're going to they're going to have struggles. You know, it's just preparing and teaching how to get with it. Be understanding to my child, you know, um, opening up and being more understanding to people like hell. man. I wish I wish I've known Jason for years. I wish I was smart enough and not. Not in the groove of things like I have been to ask, hey, man, you want to play chess? You know, I just never never once thought about it, man. I miss I probably missed out on quite a few good games, especially if the guy was in that. <laughs> Like we just got we got to be more understanding we you know it's plus i don't know you you have conversations and sometimes it's so beautiful you know sometimes like a, a small quick story i know i'm rambling but there was this one time i was i was in walmart and i was checking out it was it was late at night and i was just i had to go get some things i was living on my own i walked I was walking out and there was this kid who he had he was either in some accident or something but he he had like he he had a um something to help him assist walk or whatever and he was just sitting by himself. All I wanted to do in my soul was go sit down by that kid and talk to him. All I wanted to do was my soul was to do it and I didn't do it. It's like one of my random big regrets in life because I just wonder like what kind of conversations could we have had, you know? Like I, even with family, I had it before. Uh, I never stopped to understand. And, and Jason, I'm glad you unlocked this, man. 
because I'm not all I'm thinking about it. Like there's times where a grandparent, I went and talked to a grand, I knew a grandparent as a grandparent. I said, I, I, you know, I knew this guy as this, as this figure. And that was it. That was what I knew this guy. Of. And this guy came from generations before. So he was more instilled in the pull your boots up generation than I ever will be. But, you know, you eventually start having conversations or something triggers where, you, where they let something out. It's like, this guy used to be a professional baseball picture. And I had no idea my whole life. I was like, I was like 15, 16 when I finally learned this. Because, it, you know, we crossed the conversation and he started talking about him like, we don't know how beautiful we all are. Because we just don't understand and we don't take the time or we're too afraid to show it. And, man, it's hard to not imagine how, how much we could accomplish as a as a collective, if we just did a couple little things better, like just a couple tiny little things, you know, like understanding and being ourselves, like what it's wild to think about. It's crazy. To think and about. being willing to be vulnerable. Yeah. Gotta feel because safe. I think, Gotta feel I, think safe that's, right? I think that's the biggest issue. Like how many, like Jason, I, you know, not that I would ever expect that, like, you'd be like, hi, this is, how would be like, hi, this is Amanda. Hi, I'm Jason. Uh, I'm in recovery from alcohol and I have some mental health. Like, not that you're just going to open up and tell me that, but you pass people in your daily life and you just, like, we identify them with, like, oh, they play football. Oh, they do this job. Oh, they're a dad. But there's no, like, what happened to you? What's your story? And then that's one of the beautiful things as a therapist that we get to have in our profession. Like, as you're talking about the connection is like those moments of pure human connectedness and like being in the raw of an emotion with somebody. And that happens in a therapeutic professional relationship. And it rarely happens on the human to human friends for decade level, you know? Yeah. I, uh, I have a, I have a couple, there's a couple people I've known for a, a long time, like I'm 15, 20 years. And people, if you go and you ask people about me and to describe me or what, you know, who is he like? What is he like? And I have heard it almost word for word, actually word for word said this month. He's a guy, he's a guy's guy. And that is what I projected for a very long time. Most people know me as tough guy. I don't put up with shit. I don't do this. I don't do that. And, um, you know, I, you know, I'll fight anybody. I can beat anybody up. And none, of and none of that is anything of who I really am. And, while I I'm really good with my I'm super handy. Obviously, I run a remodeling company. I, I work on things. I fix things. Auto mechanic for a long time. A um, couple classes away from having my elect, my degree in electrical engineering and a lot of things that would be considered manly or men type or things that you know I love football. I love sports and I do love all that. But to those outside of like football the things that are the most important to me being a dad and being a fan person those are all things that are easily seen but the most important things to me in life the things that make me the happiest the things that touch me down to the soul there are so very few people family my wife i, I promise you my wife we're i don't know if you guys watch the show a million little things but i just started watching it and i am not i don't care i, I cry through about 20 minutes of every episode and my wife is like, oh, she's like, why are you crying? And my wife never even knew, like, how emotional of a person that I really am. And how those things, like, watching those stories, you know, you, people, like, you know, most, there's a lot of guys who probably cried at Remember the Titans. Because it was football, and it resonated, and dreams were stolen, and things like that. But, like, so, like, when, when, when I'm around things, and it's not even just, it's not movies, it's just, like, things, when I hear of people you know and the overcoming stuff or whatever that stuff touches me in such a way that it, it just drives that deep seated emotion in me to feel that way and it, it, i started laughing the other day because for my wife to say that it's just man I, I have buried who i am for so long that it, it, it's just crazy the person 
who should know me better than anybody in the world knows almost nothing about me. And what kind of life is that to have lived? And that is the most, if I could get out to anybody in the world, is the amount of time that we waste trying to push away and hide from anything that makes us feel uncomfortable is such a waste of time. And it just leads to so much. And if, if there is anything in the world that I could get out of anything, obviously I came on here for reason one, because I want to support you guys. I love both of you guys. Uh, I mean, I know we don't know each other that well, but just from hearing you talk and the things you do, like I'm super supportive about it. Tommy, I mean, you really become you know, a big part of my life as far as, you know, just being out there and doing what I'm doing and getting to meet people and playing football. And I love it and everything like that. But I also really, you know, wanted to be able to be a part of anything that gets this message out there to people. That is just, man, you have got to be authentic. You've got to be, you, you've got to find a place to where you can be safe, to feel vulnerable, to be able to, to express yourself and accept yourself because that is probably it's it, it is all boils down to acceptance and you've got to start we have all as human beings as men primarily um just because i know and this is what we're talking about men's health to find that level of acceptance for yourself so that way we can then move on and that is back to time where you're saying how do we keep this it's just becoming acceptance Mm-hmm. And it's just finding that acceptance for yourself, for who you are, for what you're doing before we turn ourselves into people that we are not and then continue the cycle because we will do it to our children and they will do it to their children. And it goes on and on and on. And even if we were to get the world to get it to a place where it was comfortable enough to talk about it still wouldn't really do a whole lot until we all just start to accept that. And that, and, and, and that's just, I don't know if anyone, I don't, I don't know how many people you guys have listened to this. If it's one, two, 10, 50, whatever it is, if anybody out just, you have got to learn to accept who you are and to be okay with that. And then to embrace it. Cause once we can accept it, then we can embrace it and then we can change it. Yep. And we're just picking up bigger stones and we're going to get into that city of happiness, man. It's happening. <laughs> Thank you, Jason, man. This was, this mattered a lot to me more than you know, and I'll talk to you about it another day, but um, very good, man. Really appreciate you opening up and talking about this stuff with us. Yeah, I appreciate you guys having me for real. Um, you know, I, I've caught a couple of the episodes. I want to go back and watch them all now that I wasn't really sure to find them. I see them pop up on Facebook every once in a while. So Amanda said it to me, I want to catch up on some of that stuff. And then um, as you guys filter back and cycle back, you know, I'd be more than happy to join again or, you know, reach out, whatever questions and all that stuff. So. Thank you. Yeah. And you did a perfect job. We always ask all of our guests at the end, if there's anything, any last minute words, mantras, or anything you want to give to our audience and you gave it. So that was perfect. Thank you so much. Um, and again, yes, along with Tommy said, I truly appreciate you sharing your story because that's what we need more of more people to say, I'm a real human being. I struggle with these issues. And yeah, I'm also the guy that you see coming to remodel your house and playing football every Sunday, you know, and that's okay. And I accept myself for that. So, 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 so appreciate it. Um, yeah, thank you for being here next week. We, uh, are going to be talking with it's uh, we have a we had a reschedule so we were able to bring on a uh, therapist and her name is Mary Bicknell and she's going to be talking about financial self care so I know Jason I heard you say in the very beginning you had your financial wellness pretty well intact so we're going to have someone coming on to talk about financial self care and wellness and I'm very excited about that um, if you want to stay tuned um, or if you want to catch up on all the episodes they are available on YouTube. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all the favorite um, podcast platforms, and be sure to like and subscribe. If you have any comments, you can leave them on the YouTube. Um, We will make sure they get back to our guests for any comments or feedback. And thanks again for everyone tuning in, and we will see you next week. Bye. All right. Bye. Thank you, guys.